They survived the Great Depression, then World War II. Life was not easy for the men and women aboard Honor Flight Bluegrass. 62 Kentucky and Indiana veterans on the trip of a lifetime. Hello and thanks for joining us here at 530. I'm Doug Profit and you've been uh, with them most of the week showing yes. us those great stories. And I miss them. <laughs> Just to let you know, and I'm Rachel Platt. An overnight trip to D.C. to see their memorial and a host of others, many for the first time, and it was all free of charge. Honor Flight Bluegrass celebrating its 10th anniversary with that special flight just for World War II veterans. And WHAS 11 was the only crew with them. Tonight, day two of our trip, and the lasting legacy. There's a World War II memorial. It was one stop after another for our World War II veterans in D.C. Iwo Jima among our final stops. Present arms. Time for another historic photo, more memories from then and now. The ceremony that you are about to witness is the changing of the guard. And perhaps one of the most somber reminders of war and its sacrifice, the changing of the guard at the tomb of the unknown soldier at Arlington Cemetery. These veterans bearing witness to that sacrifice during World War II, and now among only 500,000 surviving veterans. This Honor Flight Bluegrass trip, just for them. So what are you going to remember most about this trip? Oh, I won't remember it all. Every bit of it, it was nice. Not only that, meeting the people, a lot, a lot of people. A lot of people went to a lot of trouble to do this. Have you been surprised how many people have come up and said thank you for your service? Oh, thank yeah, especially young people. From their arrival at Dulles to their return trip home to Louisville and everywhere in between. These veterans like Dick Beach of Bardstown overwhelmed by the reception they've received. I just can't get over that greeting we had. Well, I know it because, wasn't it? Everybody was, did you cry? Did you tear up at all? All right. Did you tear up at all? Yeah. Howard Griffin also teared up during that reception at Dulles. The 91-year-old receiving Purple Hearts in World War II, Korea, and Vietnam. World War II for a long time, the greatest war we've ever had. But the respect that people had them for us, it's, uh, it's really surprising to me. All right. Encouraged by those wanting to know more about them on this trip, but discouraged that as a nation we're not teaching more about our history, about the greatest generation battling the Great Depression, followed by war. Do you think that the nation has lived up to its end of the bargain with the greatest generation? No. No, I do not. In what way? Well, in any way, people are letting, not keeping it in the minds of the younger people as much as the pain and suffering that families and men went through. And families is not doing that. They're not doing anything in school about it. Travel the road, sharing our load, side by side. And that includes history about women who served during World War II, three of them on this trip. Janet Williams worked logistics with the Royal Navy. You're one of three women who were on this flight, and women served in so many ways at that time. Yeah. It's a shame that they waited until we were so old to do something about it, you know. To, <laughs> right. Because now I'm, how old am I, 93, and you know, time is passing too quickly. Service to country and family, the mainstays of this generation. You were the baby. I was the baby of the crowd, yes. 92-year-old Brent Harden from Louisville, one of three brothers who served in World War II, Brent in the Navy. He would later serve 35 years with Louisville police, moving up the ranks to assistant chief, a simple motto he says in his family. Jobs of work and family, families first. Yeah. More than just a history lesson from these veterans, but a lesson in character as well. We could learn a lot from your generation. Yes. <laughs> and we'll leave it at that. Howard Griffin still in uniform, still holding the flag. For everyone who encountered these veterans on this trip, a brush with greatness, real life history, better than anything you can read in a book.
And you know, one thing people have asked me, each veteran did have a guardian. Oftentimes that was a family member. There was also a medical staff with us at all times. Remember, these veterans were from 89 to 100 years old. Honor Flight Bluegrass, always looking for World War II veterans. Their website, honorflightbluegrass.org. We do have a special section right now on our website for all of Rachel's stories and pictures. Just go to whas11.com. And one break you also got was the weather was pretty nice in Washington because it can be stifling if we get this kind of weather there. And they held up so well. And one other thing, we got as many as we could. I think we got 41 of them to say their name, uh, how long they served, and their age. And just so you know, that's all on the website as well if you want to see some of the great faces along for the ride on that trip. I know what a lot of people will be doing this weekend. Yes, exactly. Right there on our website. All right, Doug, thank you so much. Appreciate it. Well,